Hello, I'm Stefan Schwartz, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Schwartz Report. This week, I want to talk about something that is literally altering the earth, and we're not talking much about it at all. To get started on this, to understand what I want to say, because I think it's so important. I want to start by just talking about climate change, because that's the most obvious example of what's happening. And what I mean is that the way we look at the world, the way we consider it, is inadequate. The dominant view of science still, although it's changing, and of most people, is what academics call materialism. That is the idea that each consciousness begins from the neuroanatomy of that individual, that when they die, consciousness ceases. There is no continuity of consciousness. Each consciousness is independent, that there's no connection that exists between them except the normal senses, speaking, listening, that humans are the only ones who really have consciousness. That view arose because of the Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563. There were 25 meetings of the Roman Catholic Curia. This was at a time when the Protestant Reformation was getting underway and when modern science, as we think of it, is, was just beginning. And out of the Council of Trent, they issued a, an edict and they said that anything that had to do with spirit, read consciousness, that was the business of the church. And anything that had to do with physical reality, well, that was the realm of the emerging new scientist, science, scientists like Galileo. And if scientists became involved with what they called spirit, and they could catch them, they would, and they would torture and kill them, and they did. That's where the Inquisition really got underway. And for 300 years, 400 years, that point of view in which science was one thing and things which we think of as spirit or I would say consciousness, that was another thing. And they weren't to interact and science had nothing to say about consciousness and religion really had nothing to say about science. And this went on until the end of the 19th century when psychology and psychiatry, anthropology all began, parapsychology, all, all those disciplines in science began at that time. And we are now seeing sort of culmination of that because materialism is now becoming increasingly known not for being wrong, but for simply being inadequate. And I think that is a very important transition because I want to suggest to you that materialism is what is causing the damage in the Earth's matrix of life. And to get started, let me give you some, to give some context to this. I mean, let's start with some facts and we'll start with climate change because it's becoming such a big deal. 
to my surprise, a survey that came out of Yale University at the end of 23 reported that 16% of Americans still did not believe in climate change. That's about 49 million people. They didn't believe it. They thought it was some kind of political jargon or conspiracy theory, or I don't know. But in any case, they didn't recognize or they chose not to, a kind of willful ignorance. They didn't see rising seas. They didn't see the forest fires. They didn't see the increasing temperatures in the deserts, the tornadoes destroying whole towns. They either didn't see it or they chose not to understand it, a form of willful ignorance. But I want to su suggest to you, I, would, I want to tell you, based on facts, as you know, Schwartz Report is just about facts. Let me take another part of what's happening as a result of climate change. And that is the subsidence of the earth in places the tectonic plates shifting, changing. I'll give you two examples. Mexico City doesn't look squishy or anything. And yet, research has shown that Mexico City is sinking up to 20 inches a year. And that's having a huge effect on the railroads because of the tracks, bridges, roadways, water sources. Literally, it's sinking. Even worse, California's San Joaquin Valley, because the farmers don't have enough water from the Colorado River, enough, there isn't enough rain, they're pumping out the groundwater. And the San Joaquin Valley has sunk as much as 28 feet in the last century. 28 feet. So climate change is not just about sea rise. It's not just about forest fires or droughts or tornadoes. It's about the earth itself shifting to accommodate what is happening as a result of the materialist technologies that humans employ. That's what I'm trying to suggest to you. We need to develop a new way new kinds of technologies, electric vehicles are an example of that, new technologies, new ways of agriculture, new ways of, of the use of water that are different, not because materialism, which has been the source of the thinking that has created the existing technologies, but because not because it's so much that it's wrong, it's that it's inadequate and that it's causing all kinds of problems. And we don't ever think about it in that way. We talk about specifics, but we don't talk about the fact that the whole way in which we look at the earth is inadequate. And we don't really understand what it's doing to us. Georgetown University wrote in a research paper recently that climate change has killed roughly 4 million people globally 
since the turn of the century. That's more than the population of Los Angeles or Berlin, Germany, or it is in fact more than any other non-COVID public health emergency, according to the World Health Organization. Combined, it is killing millions and it's going to kill millions more. Right now, there are about 117 million climate refugees. That is, people who have been displaced because of climate change. And it's going to get much worse. And you know, if you live in a small town or a city, ask your city planners, ask your physicians, I spoke at a medical conference not too long ago, and I was talking about this, and I said to the physicians afterwards, we had a lunch, we went out to lunch, I said, what would you do if 10,000 people suddenly showed up in your town or your city? How would you deal with that? How would they get health care? How would babies get what they need? Where would people sleep? Where would they go to the bathroom? If they were diabetics, where would they get insulin? If they had some other disease that required continuous medication, where would they get it? How would your pharmacies deal with it? And the doctors, each one at the table, looked at me and said, we couldn't possibly deal with that. And yet that's what's coming. The matrix of life as a result of materialism and the choices that we are making is changing the world in ways we just don't even recognize. Scientists have warned that climate change would alter the prevalence and spread of disease, for instance, particularly those caused by pathogens that are sensitive to temperature. This year, rare illnesses have come as a surprise to many researchers, doctors, government planners, People who have been following this, this growth increase in these unusual diseases that weren't even present or were not an issue, say that 1920, 2023 represents the continuation of a trend that's going to become more pronounced over time. So, pathogens that you haven't had to deal with before, viruses that have mutated to prepare for climate change, bacteria, they're gonna alter our health situation and we're all gonna be affected by this. A federal report, this one, you just, just hard to believe. A federal report by the Government Accountability Office concludes that climate change could disturb the nuclear waste left in Greenland and the Marshall Islands. Now, you may not even know this or remember this, but back in the late 40s, early 50s, when they were developing nuclear weapons, they tested these weapons at places in Greenland and in the Marshall Islands and didn't really know what to do with the radioactive waste that was left. But what the government is now telling us is that as sea level rises, 
it could cause a spread, a contamination as a result of this nuclear waste that could have all kinds of problems. Fukushima is another example of this. But nuclear power plants with waste that are along the coast in California, other states, as sea rise occurs, what's going to happen to that nuclear waste? Are we planning for that? Are we spending the money it's going to take? No. It's also affecting at the most ordinary basic level. Climate change from coastal sea rise to hurricanes to western wildfires is increasingly pinching the insurance companies and they're raising their rates as you may have noticed and they're even pulling back and simply ceasing to do business in parts of the country because they don't want to be involved with it in florida a number of insurance companies have simply withdrawn you can't get home insurance. So you're living there in your house on the coast. That's your biggest investment, perhaps. And you get a notice that you can't there, your company is not going to insure you anymore. What are you going to do? Stay there, take the risk, If something happens. You just have to give it up and lose that investment. What's going to happen to businesses? that can't get insurance. It's changing the whole nature of how the insurance business operates. And it's having a tremendous effect on the consciousness of people. We don't talk about that much either. They did a survey in Canada and found out that 80% of young people in Canada felt that climate change had impacted their mental health. 37% said their feelings about climate change had had a negative impact on their day to day functioning and 56% reported feeling sad, anxious and powerless. And most of these young people don't have anyone to talk to about this, about how they're feeling. So it's affecting us not only physically, but psychologically. We keep pursuing business structures and technologies whose function is to feed greed and create profit not support well-being and it's reaping terrible results it's so bad in fact that an analysis published in nature in march nature is one of the leading scientific journals in the world has predicted that the melting ice caps are literally slowing the Earth's rotation to such an extent that the mechanism used since 1972 to reconcile official time based on the Earth's rotation and atomic clocks will be delayed by three years. Enough ice has melted to move sea level enough that we can actually see the rate of the Earth's rotation has been affected. According to the geophysicists at Scripps Institute of Oceanography in La Jolla, California. Everything about our world is changing. It's what's producing the stress, the depression, the anxiety that people feel. We 
stand at a crossroads. And the choice of which way we're going to go is going to end up being made because of the choices that you and I and our friends and family make. In the election in November, at every level, from city, state to federal, go out and talk to the people that are running for office. Find out where do they stand on climate change? Where do they stand on the idea that all consciousness is interlinked and interdependent? And that the matrix of life is a unity and that when something goes wrong, it affects every level. Look at what's happening to the coral reefs. Do a Google. Do a Google on what's happening to whales. What's happening to monarch butterflies. What's happening to the bees. Spend a few minutes, just do a Google, check it for yourself. Don't just believe what I'm telling you, check it. What you're going to find out is the entire matrix of life on Earth is being affected by the way we are approaching the problem and the way we choose to do business in our lives the technologies we use, the policies that are written. And that if we don't change this, the effects not only on us, but on every living being on Earth are going to be dramatic and traumatic. Find out what the people who you are going to vote for think and vote for only people who understand the matrix of life and who understand that we must change. Because materialism is not working. We need to go a different path. And it's going to depend on how you and I and the people we know vote. So what do you think? Are you willing to take the time to make the effort to find out who you're really voting for? I hope so. Because it's going to affect you and your children and their children. Thank you.